I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. In this video we're not going to program anything and we're not doing any maths. And this is just about explaining what normal vectors and normal maps for 2D games are. Now I'm not an artist, not technical, nor regular, so once more this is just a beginner's video. I created this video because I wanted to show a shockwave effect using normal maps in the next video. I currently don't plan to create a video on lighting with normal maps. Just in case some viewers don't know why normal maps are interesting, here's a quick explanation on that. A normal map is an image used to add 3D information to another image. Here's two examples. The first is what we're going to do in the next video, a shockwave effect using normal maps. Let's say this image is a game, and these two images are normal maps we're going to use to add a shockwave. The shader is going to take the 3D information from the map to distort the application surface like this. Now I'm sorry to tease you with a second example I said I probably won't create a video on. Normal map lighting. Let's say this is the image I want to draw. If you ever used Blender, you'll recognize the monkey Suzanne. I just rendered her and painted solid colors over the image. Then I also rendered the normal path of Suzanne at the same angle. So we got two flat images. One is the diffuse color and one is the normal map with some 3D information of Suzanne's mesh. If we draw the diffuse color image and send it together with the normal map into the lighting shader, the shader will extract the 3D information from the normal map and use that information to shade the colored image like this. It now looks like a 3D object, but in truth it's just two 2D images and a lighting shader. The purpose of this video is just to explain how that 3D information is stored in a normal map. First, we need to know what a normal vector is. So this is a simple sphere rendered in Blender and the same sphere with its wireframe. Like this you can see how the sphere is made out of vertices, edges connecting the vertices, and faces defined by those edges. Now a normal vector is a unit vector, and that's a vector with a length of one unit, and it's standing perpendicular on a face. In 3D games we'd usually look at normals on vertices, but for this video on normal maps we can ignore the distinction and just look at normals on faces. Here you can see one normal vector on each face of the sphere. All of those normals are pointing into the direction the triangles are facing. This also means if we know the normal vector of a triangle, then we know what direction the triangle is facing. Now as any 3D vector, a normal vector as well is built from three components, the X, Y and Z components. But to know those components, we need to define the coordinate system. It could, in example, be the coordinate system of the sphere, or the coordinate system of the world the sphere is in, which is different since the sphere and its coordinate system could be rotated, moved and scaled. For normal maps in 2D games, we're going to use the coordinate system of the view. This means the x-axis is horizontal on the view, the y-axis vertical on the view, and the z-axis is pointing out from the view towards the viewer. Let's focus on the normal's x component for now. If you try to imagine how much each pixel along the central horizontal line of the sphere faces to the left or to the right, so along the x-axis, you'd get something like this. The pixels on the left face to the left. And the closer they get to the center, the less they face left, and at the center they'll face neither left nor right. And to the right of the center they face more and more to the right. The arrows you see here are basically the x-component of the normal vector. So the x-component of the leftmost normal is 1. Never mind the orientation of the x-axis, it doesn't really matter whether the negative part is on the left or right. Most normal maps work like this image, where positive is to the left, but you could easily flip the axis multiplying x by negative 1. Now the x-component of the rightmost normal is negative 1. And the x-component of the normal at the center is 0, it's facing neither left nor right. The pixels along the vertical center won't ever face left nor right either, because it's a sphere. So the normal's x component there is always zero. And the normal's x component of the pixels along the diagonal axis will be something in between. Now we can do the same with the y component of the normals. The pixels on the upper half of the sphere face up. The closer they get to the center, the less they face up, and at the center, they'll face neither up nor down. Then on the lower half of the sphere, they face more and more down. The arrows you see here are the y component of the normal vector. So the y component of the topmost normal is 1, the y component of the bottom normal is negative 1, and the y component of the normal in the center is 0. And again, the pixels along the horizontal center will always face neither up nor down because it's a sphere. 
so the normal's y component is always zero there. And the pixels along the diagonal axis will be something in between again. Now the z component is a bit more difficult to draw. Since the z axis is facing out of the screen, I can't just draw arrows to represent the z component of the normals. So I decided to draw circles instead, and the bigger the circle, the larger the z component of the normal is, or the more the normal points out of the screen. So if you try to imagine how much the normals of each pixel face towards the viewer, you'll get something like this. The center of the sphere is facing directly out of the screen, so its z component is 1. But the farther away from the center a pixel is, the less its normal will point out of the screen, but point to the sides rather. So the farther away from the sphere's center the pixel is, the lower its normal's z component will be. The leftmost and rightmost normals will not point out of the screen at all, so their z component is 0. And since we're not on the x or y axis anymore, this will be true still if we look at the pixels above or below the center. And this will be true for any pixel on the sphere really. The farther away from the center it is, the less its normal will face out of the screen and thus the lower its normal's z component will be. All normals at the edge of the sphere are parallel to the screen and this means their z component is always zero. You might have noticed we don't have any negative z components. The reason is simple. A negative z component would mean the normal is pointing away from the viewer into the screen. Any face pointing away from the viewer cannot be seen though. So on a normal map, the x and y components of a normal can range from negative 1 to a positive 1, but the z component will always only range from 0 to 1. Now let's have a look at all this combined. You can look at any of those normal vectors and see its components. In example, the normal at the center. It's pointing straight out of the screen. Its x component is 0, its y component is 0 as well, and its z component is 1. Or the normal vector in the bottom left. It's pointing down and to the left and only very slightly out of the screen. Its x component is close to 0.5, its y component is close to 0.5 as well, and its z component is close to 0. I had trouble imagining this, especially the z component, but I hope I could kind of explain this so far because now it's time to show the same on a normal map. So this is the normal map of the same sphere. Each pixel has a color RGB value that represents the normal vector on that pixel. But with all color channels active, it's still a bit confusing. So let's look at each color channel separately. This is the red color channel of the same normal map. And immediately you can see the left side of the sphere is bright red and the right side of the sphere is dark red or black even. The center of the sphere is medium red, and so is the flat area surrounding the sphere. The red value represents the x component of the normal vector. 255 red means the x component is positive 1. 0 red means the x component is negative 1. And 127 red means the x component is 0. Now here's the green channel of the normal map. It represents the y component of the normal vector. 255 green means the y component is positive 1, 0 green means the y component is negative 1, and half green means the y component is 0. So red and green are quite easy to understand, the blue channel is a bit more tricky. The blue channel represents the z component of the normal vector. The brighter the blue channel is, the more the normal vector points out of the view towards the viewer. So 255 blue means the z component is 1. It's pointing straight out of the view, in example at the center of the sphere or in the flat area surrounding the sphere. And 127 blue means the z component is 0. The normal is pointing parallel to the view, in example at the edge of the sphere. 0 blue would theoretically mean the normal is pointing straight away from the view. But again, we could never see those pixels, which is why the blue channel always ranges from 127 to 255. And here's the normal map with all color channels again. Now you should understand why normal maps always are bluish. The red channel ranges from 0 to 255 and so does the green channel. But the blue channel always starts at 127. So overall there's always more blue than red or green. And you can also understand why flat areas are always light blue. It's made of 127 red because the x component is 0, 127 green because the y component is 0 as well, and 255 blue because the z component is 1. The last step is converting the RGB value into a normal vector. Luckily that part is really simple. We just need to convert the value ranges so 0 to 255 becomes negative 1 to positive 1. 
or inside the shader even simpler since the colors range from 0 to 1 already. So VEC3 XYZ of the normal is 2 times VEC3 RGB minus 1. Now if you still need some help understanding normal maps or want to take a closer look at other maps, I wrote a simple educational tool for that and uploaded it to itch.io. A link is in the description of this video. I added a few more normal maps here to play with and you can display the red, green or blue channel separately. Now if you move the cursor onto the map, you'll see the normal vector at the pixel represented by the white line and in the text window you'll see the RGB values of that pixel and the normal vectors XYZ components calculated from that color. I also added an isometric view of the normal showing the normal as a white line as well and the red X, the green Y and the blue Z components it's made of. Anyways, that's all I can tell about normal vectors and normal maps for 2D games, so I hope you're all prepared for the next video where we'll use normal maps to create this shockwave shader effect. Until next time.